Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to your, to your user group ANZ365 FinOps team. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning wherever you are. Stay safe, stay blessed. Uh, I would like to thank you to all, all the volunteers and speakers and attendees who have been giving their best to the community. A special thanks to the, all the volunteers and speakers who have been spending so many time to give back to the community out of their family time, out of their busy schedules and office times. So thank you so much. A uh, very quick overview to know about your group. This group, we specifically, we are trying to gather uh, FinOps professionals from ANZ region, where we can focus on to the Dynamics 65 ERP modules of the ecosystem. Uh, you can join this group. Uh, it will be a one place so that you can connect with a wider platform professionals and learn more about upcoming releases and uh, keep up to date yourself. We also try to build a FinOps community into ANZ region, as I said. Uh, this will help you to grow your knowledge. Uh, and we uh, we have been trying to, primarily we have been trying to focus on to the finance and operations, but at some point we will definitely going to talk about all the integrations, which include uh, other apps of the ecosystem. Uh, which includes sales and marketing and power platform other app, uh, but primarily we will we will start with FinOps first. There are so many ways to get involved with the community, so you can use this ANZ365 FinOps team hashtag there. You can also tweet using this hashtag. You can write blogs there. You can follow us onto the LinkedIn. There are uh, th this is a way you can follow us. We have a dedicated company page and a, and, a, and a group on our LinkedIn. You can follow us on here. You can also follow us on our Twitter account. Feel free to use a uh, tweet using this hashtag. And follow us there. There will be a lot of announcements coming up. Last but not the least, all the sessions are recorded. So you can watch on demand sessions from our YouTube channel. Uh, here is a quick up, upcoming list sessions here. Uh, if you, but if you have more sessions into your mind, please feel free to jump in and say, OK, I want to talk about this topic. So we, we are happy to provide all the logistics wherever we can. So we can arrange uh, your session we can we can record it we can upload into the youtube channel we can provide you the recording uh, from our youtube channel uh, it is a list of different sessions which are available which are coming soon one of the very hot and and on demand topic which we have been hearing from so many people they want to learn about the advanced very advanced warehousing so we got a very good speaker who is going to talk about uh, from advanced warehousing pr perspective from zero to hero. So there will be a series of at least six to seven sessions where we will talk about completely advanced warehousing. Uh, we also going to talk about dual integrations. Uh, it will be again a series of uh, sessions. You can feel free to ask any questions on. We, we will talk about the virtual entities, art set, project operations, and there are new features available. Uh, I would not say new feature. It has been there, the punch out feature in finance and operation and supply chain. Uh, but uh, we are going to talk about this one. This is a, just a, a small list. But if you have more sessions in your mind, uh, please come forward. With this one, I'll hand over to our today's our speaker. Again, it's uh, Zishan Ahmed. Zishan, you please feel free to share your screen now. Thank you, Faisal. Sorry, Zishan uh, Sheikh. Yeah, just a correction. It's Zishan Sheikh. Uh, thank you very much for providing me a platform to present uh, these sessions. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the electronic reporting uh, 
and this is our session two, which uh, based on the request and the requirement from from all of you guys, uh, I came to know that uh, people are still struggling in order to make some modification in the existing standard report. So I thought to come up with an idea to uh, go with the demonstration, how we can be able to make the customization in the existing report uh, through uh, through electronic reporting without any code. So uh, I have chosen a topic of uh, fixed asset report, which is standard. So we'll go with the with the scratch to to end in order to make some changes in the existing report. Yep. So uh, again, this is our uh, second session. Uh, if you haven't covered or haven't uh, joined the session one on electronic reporting, uh, basically I have covered the basics of uh, electronic reporting. What are the backbone and what are the concepts on electronic reporting? If we would like to make any uh, any modification or changes or prepare any EFT or EF uh, SEPA file or maybe a, a new reports, uh, you will get an idea uh, from our session one. So uh, let's proceed with the slide first. <clears throat> uh, my name is Zishan Sheikh. I'm I'm based in, in New Zealand. Uh, I'm a lead consultant in finance in in Christchurch uh, with DXC Technologies. Uh, um, I have approximately of 10 plus years of experience uh, in dynamics. So. Uh, if you have any query or any questions, you can directly reach me over this email. Uh, or maybe if you would like to connect me, uh, connect through uh, LinkedIn, you can connect me from there. Yep. Uh, like I have mentioned, what we will learn today is we will go through the demonstration on um, on how to make any modification in the existing or the standard report through electronic reporting. So that's what we will be learning today. And hopefully uh, you from this session, you will be able to make uh, changes in your existing report based on the business requirements. Yep. Uh, the today's agenda, which I have mentioned, is how to customize the standard report through electronic reporting, and that will be a demo. And uh, what changes we are going to do in the system will be data model, model to data source, and format designings. And then we'll take uh, take your questions if there will be any questions. Yep. OK, let's uh, move to the demo. OK, um, uh, since today I have uh, taken a topic of fixed asset role for the report, I think uh, most of most of the people aware that uh, this particular report uh, is is been released in Dynamics 365 uh, in AX 2012 and you know AX 4. Um, this particular report was not there, so we usually had to customize that report. So uh, with this uh, D365 FinOps, uh, Microsoft have brought this particular option. Uh, this particular report comes with the standard. If you see that uh, it's under the inquiry and report uh, transaction report, which is under the fixed asset module, uh, it's called fixed asset roll forward. If I click on it, uh, there's a obviously you would like to see your report based on the specified dates and you would like to see what will be the net balance uh, what what's the depreciation amount or if there's any write-up or write-down are being done for the specified asset or for whole uh, all the asset across the company um, there's a format mapping as of now it's it's not showing it up <clears throat> Why? Because Microsoft have brought this particular feature through electronic reporting. So uh, in uh, in order to bring the standard report, how we actually do that is we go to the electronic reporting workspace. And uh, we go into the Microsoft here and go into the repositories. Yeah. Under the global, I'll click on open. 
what happens is under this open option, uh, Microsoft has uh, several reports, several uh, standard uh, custom uh, standard reports uh, in LCS. So uh, system will allow us to import all the standard report which has been offered by Microsoft. So you can be able to extract those report and uh, make the part of your uh, implementation. Yeah, so uh, there are a heap of uh, reports or EFT files which are being designed uh, for a specified region or you know, uh, so it's it's pretty pretty good and it's available across across the globe. So no matter if you have chosen uh, New Zealand region, uh, you still will be able to see uh, Australia or you know any other region. So you can see the whole list of it. Yep. So let's find out the fixed asset report, which is the part of our today's session. <coughs> Let me just search it as fixed asset model, and I'm I'm concerned about this fixed asset roll forward. Right now, we are not doing any modification. I'm just trying to show you how do we actually import the standard uh, report. So I'll just click on import. Uh, I am choosing the latest version because uh, Microsoft keep coming up with the. Uh, additions or uh, you know changes with with the existing report. Uh, so there are a couple of hotfixes. So if I'm going to choose the latest version, it means that all these hotfixes are already available in 1.6. So what I'll do is I'll click on import and say yes. <clears throat> So again, it's a one time setup. Uh, you do not have to redo it again and again. So the idea was to show you uh, from scratch that how do we actually import and export and how do we actually modify the report. If I go into the reporting configuration here, I can see this report earlier. It was not just uh, uh, appearing it. Uh, since I have just imported it, system have just brought it into into the reporting configuration. If I go into my fixed asset roll forward report, <clears throat> fix asset, fix asset roll forward report, and if I put maybe yeah today's date or maybe Let's put first and here I can see the options which I have just um, imported it, the standard report from from the system. I'll select that and since I have enough information, so I'm just going to choose the fixed asset group uh, as comp. So show me the report based on the uh, fixed asset group comp. I go OK. And this report will be generated it in Excel because uh, it has several columns and it and the layout will not suffice the requirement in order to you know show you in SSRS. Although you, you can be able to change it to a PDF if you would like to, but uh, most of the customers prefer to have it in Excel format. So this is the report which uh, just look like. Uh, in the system for fixed asset uh, group com. So these are the asset and it tells you the what's the balance and what's the acquisition, depreciation, write up and write down and your disposal, your net balance and your know, all the informations are just populated here. If we would like to run it for the across the whole fixed asset group uh, fixed assets uh, for whole company, it will give you all the information and on the top, it will tell you the balances of it. Now, recently uh, I came to know that a couple of uh, people are looking for making any modification in this report. Uh, 
like they would like to put a column uh, like uh, uh, location uh, where this particular asset is located. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, some of the customers would like to see the technical information or maybe uh, some of the uh, fixed asset or devices uh, would like to have some maintenance. So uh, we would like to maybe see a maintenance and last maintenance date. So let's try to add these three uh, fields which are which are not coming up in this particular standard report. How do we do it? Uh, first, what I'll do is I'll close this up, take you to the configuration. Now, uh, before I go into the configuration, uh, I had to set this uh, uh, configuration provider. Because uh, if you have attended my first session, I have mentioned is if we would like to make any modification, you have to have a configuration provider. Uh, it can be your uh, like I mentioned, I'm 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 working for DXC, so we usually provide uh, DXC.com here. So uh, uh, so whoever you, you are working with Microsoft, you'll put uh, uh, like Microsoft.com or whatsoever partners for which you are working for. Uh, you'll just put their name and uh, define the provider. What it will happen is whenever uh, we have customized or done any modification on uh, on these kind of report, you can be able to share the library and you know utilize it in some other uh, uh, projects. So uh, I have already cr created the configuration provider and um, if we see that um, in this fixed asset model, I can't, I don't see the status as draft. If I just put it and remove that, uh, still I will not be able to make any modification because the configuration provider is Microsoft. So for that, what I need to do is, uh, since I have created the uh, configuration provider as Contoso, so I'll just click on new configuration here, and I would like to create the data model. And here I'll just put uh, FA model. Yep. So uh, I'll I'll just choose this particular option. I'll, so what happens is it's basically uh, copying all the information, whatsoever uh, information uh, we have in fixed asset model, the standard model. It just transferred it to FA model, and the status is draft now, and the configuration provider is Contoso. So. Uh, now I have authority to make any modification for my model and for that uh, what's uh, model is again uh, as I have discussed in my first session that uh, we are basically defining it uh, on the model as uh, data types and string values whatsoever additional values or additional fields you will be needing it. So I'll just go ahead and I see this asset roll forward. Uh, under that, I'll just add um, these three fields. Add, that will be child. I'll say <coughs> location value. So location value got updated here. I'll add one more field called last maintenance. And obviously it should be date here. The third field would be <clears throat> technical information. Information. So I'm assuming it should be string. So uh, 
we have basically modified the existing uh, model which has been developed or uh, um, provided by Microsoft. So we would like to see these three fields. So we have just added these three fields. Now let's map these fields with D365 database. How do we do it? Uh, map model to database source. <coughs> I'll go into the designer here. On the right hand side, basically you see the data model which you have just updated it. Here you can see that uh, those fields which we have created is not uh, bold uh, because it is not being mapped with my D365 database. So uh, last maintenance, location value and technical information is still uh, open. So uh, there are two ways to uh, make uh, mapping either uh, on this data source system uh, in the standard. Uh, we can see that uh, we have been used. Uh, Microsoft have already been uh, done the mapping for each of these fields. Uh, let's try to understand what's this at the rate dot and all those things. Uh, if I added this. <coughs> So it says that uh, uh, somehow it's coming up from currency currency code uh, table, and this is the field from a database. But uh, what at the rate is is asset roll forward temp. So Microsoft have created some uh, table from where uh, this currency code is being mapped. Now if I go here, uh, currency code might be available here, which is here. So Microsoft just did uh, and made the mapping with by clicking on this add data source. Let's try to do the mapping for our last maintenance. Uh, you can be able to do uh, uh, you can be able to do the mapping in two ways. Either you click on add it and uh, find the table by uh, by choosing the options or else instead of going into added uh, you do know the table name let's say asset roll forward temp if i expand that uh, i do know that uh, last maintenance is uh, is not available under under this uh, so uh, where it can be so maybe uh, under the relationship of the uh, fixed asset table so what I'll do is uh, this is many to one uh, one to many relation. So I'll go into the relation here and I'll choose an asset ID here. This is a table which I'm, I'm interested in and under that I might be able to find uh, last maintenance. If I search that called last. Let's say last. So here we go. So if I do the binding here, system will automatically do the binding with my uh, this particular table. So if I would like to do the binding with my uh, data model for the location value, let's try to do it from by clicking on edit button. Yep. Let's say uh, I have the location. Uh, under uh, asset table again. So before I go into the asset table, uh, I got a request from the customer that um, let me take you to the fixed assets first in order to understand in in more detail. So if I see that uh, this location, it doesn't make sense if I put uh, location ID as HQ first L uh, FL. So what my customer requested is that I would like to see the name instead of this location. Now uh, in the fixed asset, we can just see this particular information and now we have to go into this particular uh, details and we have to get this particular name instead of uh, taking it up from your fixed asset and you can see that it's a separate table. 
but uh, if you have covered uh, the session first session I have discussed that uh, uh, you can be able to uh, bring any information from one single table. Uh, Microsoft have this mechanism in the uh, in this electronic reporting in order to do the relationship by itself. So what I'll do is again I'll go into the relation and under the fix asset asset ID. Um, I'm expecting um, sorry, it should be under the asset table. And since we would like to have the asset location name, not the ID, then I have to go into the relationship of uh, location ID. So I'll again go into the relation under the asset table and I need to find asset location here. Asset location and I need to go down more and take the name from there. If I would have been requested to show me only this particular information, you can get this detail from fixed asset. So I just uh, take it up from the fixed asset uh, details from it. But I would like to have the name, so I have to choose this name uh, under this fixed asset location table. System will automatically do the inner join and take this information by itself. So I'll save that. Now, uh, this particular screen, the benefit of this screen is system basically give you an error when you uh, when you actually uh, find any issue with your mapping. For example, um, for this particular field, let's say I have chosen integer and uh, your data uh, database in D365, this particular field is uh, string, then it may give you an error or maybe if you are going to define any uh, logic or conditions on the right hand side, the functions, then uh, there can be possibility that the return value might be incorrect. So it will give you an error. So uh, this this basically give you an idea in order to run your logic. Yeah, and you can also test your logic. What what will be the result and it will basically basically show you the result of your formula. Yeah. Once you do so, you'll go close this. And I'll find the technical information here. And I do know that the technical information will be under. Fix asset ID and I'll just search the tech info. Yeah, let's take Take info one and do the binding here. So you have successfully made the binding with your database and now uh, we need to make a formatting for your Excel file in order to uh, make these changes available in, the, in your report. So once you do these changes, you have to uh, change the status to complete. Uh, you will not be able to uh, run the report if the if the status is in draft mode. So once this is completed, uh, again, uh, this standard report fix as a roll forward is uh, the configuration provider is Microsoft. Now, uh, obviously we would like to make some changes in in uh, in your own model since we have added three fields. So what I'll do is I'll again click on the configuration here and I'll put drive from fixed asset roll forward. So what it will do is it will basically copy the whole information, whatsoever information uh, has been designed by Microsoft, but we'll just copy it from, from it. So let's say I'll put the name is fixed asset FA roll forward. version 1.0. Yep. And here uh, as you can see that uh, we are seeing two different data model. So system is asking us either we would like to take the first data model which is standard 
or the second one which we have created it in the standard. We don't have these three three fields uh, in modified one. We have added three different fields. Now, as you can see that the other information just populated data model definition. So what I'll do is I'll just choose the data model version which we have completed. Yeah. And data model definition is the fixed asset entry point where we have done done the mapping with with the fields which we have created it. I'll click on the create configuration here. And now what I'll do is I'll go into the attachments. And here what I can see is the file which is available as a template. What I'll do is I'll open that. Add it. Let's say I would like to have these field, uh, these uh, three fields on on this position. So we have to be very mindful because uh, when we actually do these kind of changes, uh, system has some ranges are being defined. As you can see, uh, uh, this particular label has some uh, information available. So. Uh, whenever we are going to run the report, system will not show me a uh, depreciation method label. It's basically taking it up from the system. Yeah. So uh, again, uh, every single uh, these particular fields, it has some specified ranges which we discussed in first session. So let's try to uh, add these three fields. Um, what I'll do is I'll just uh, add these columns. Three columns. I'll make I'll merge and center these three columns again, same as the way it has been designed. So for right now I'm just putting a label as a hard core value instead of taking it up from the system. So let's say I'll say location for the asset. Um, um, or technical information. And last maintenance. Yes. <clears throat> so, uh, in order to map these uh, fields uh, into D365 electronic reporting, what I have mentioned in my first session is um, I have to define the formula and do it through the manage name manager. So what I'll do is I'll add the field called location value. So electronic reporting can read read that I'm talking about uh, the value should be flowing in this particular uh, area, which is D10 row. And for technical information, I'll put technical info and I'll put E10 and go OK. And if I define last maintenance, which is our date, F10. I'll go and close that. Now, if you pay attention here, uh, if I choose location, I can see location value. If I choose technical information, I see technical info, the one which I have created it in the uh, name manager. If I choose last maintenance, I can see in this. Basically, uh, what it happens is it's basically talks with electronic reporting based on these uh, this particular field. Yeah, now. Uh, as we can see that it's general here, so I would like to put a uh, date in it. So what I'll do is I'll change the formatting for that and I'll just put 
date just to ensure that system should uh, throw a date on it. Yeah. So uh, another thing I want you to uh, pay attention on whenever you are going to make any modification on any any specified report, uh, there are some ranges are being defined in in the electronic reports. So if I show you FAG range, if I click on it, so we see uh, a specified range here. So if I would have maybe made any modification uh, incorrectly, let's say I have just added the added the column on this particular row, then maybe I might seeing some some information here and uh, this particular uh, uh, this column will remain on this particular uh, side to e a, a e column. So let's say if I'm going to add. Um, let's say. On, on my right. Now what happens is basically I have changed the range. So which will give you an error and you will not be able to get the desirable result from from the system. So you know uh, we have to be very precautious whenever we are going to make any changes in in the existing report. Yep. So after these changes, I'll just uh, quickly note down these values in my notepad. So whenever we are going to define uh, in the electronic reporting configuration, uh, the value should match with whatsoever values we have defined. So technical info. Last but not least, uh, last maintenance. Yep, so it's coming up after book label. I'll just close that. What I'll do is I'll delete this format, the one which is being designed by Microsoft. I'll click on file. Browser. Browse. Under. Um, presumably it's. Yep, that's the one. Yep, so that's the one uh, the format which we have designed. Now let's go to the designer and do the minor changes. So here uh, the template, basically the standard template, we removed it. So now we are going to bring our template, the one which we have created it now. We'll go with that. We do not have to save this. Uh, after defining this, uh, basically I click the save button. So I'll just expand all the tabs here and we see the vm range where book value is there so i want the values after book value so i'll click on the vm range and then click on the add at cell so here uh, i will put the same value the one which i have basically designed it um, so uh, what I have done is, uh, as we can see that on my Excel, uh, I have defined location value here. So I'll just put uh, location, sorry. I'll just put location value here by copying it and paste it here. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, we have to uh, bring this thing by clicking on move up, move up to the specified area where you would like to keep your fields. So let's create all three fields first and then we'll just move up. So I'll just go and click add cell. Uh, a 
Another cell is technical information. Info. <clears throat> Click OK. Again, I'll click on the add cell and here I'll put last mint and go OK. Now let's just move these items. Unfortunately, we have to move these items uh, one by one. Okay, so uh, we have just updated the format um, based on the Excel file, the one which we have defined it. Let's do the mapping with our data model, the one which we have created it earlier. So what I'll do is I'll find my data location value, which is here. I'll do the binding here. Technical information. Here we go. I'll do the binding. And last maintenance would be here. Do the binding. I'll save that. And it's a, a warning message. We can ignore it for now. Um, I'll close this up. And I'll change the status to complete in order to run the report. <clears throat> If I go into my fix asset module and run the fix asset roll forward. Now initially we have seen that we had only one fix asset roll forward report. Now I can see mine modification one and I would like to run it for the fix asset comp group and run this report. If I click on the report, the one which we have created it, as you can see that uh, location is just appearing it here the way uh, uh, it's coming up from the uh, fixed asset name. Um, Fessel, can you uh, mute the participant please? Yep, okay. sure. So uh, location and the technical information and as well as the last maintenance here. So uh, again, the idea is quite simple in order to uh, make any modification in electronic reporting as I have received a couple of more requests on EFT files where we would like to put some hash hashtag values so we cannot have any any uh, you know, uh, theft issue where we can manually modify any any changes. So uh, it's it's quite easy to make any modification, even though in house if we have some uh, technical information in order to uh, how do we actually make the modification in the reports or the files to be exported from from the system. So that's that's much and that's the pretty much the idea. Now let's say that if customer is quite happy with this modification. Now you do not have to redo the whole whole uh, cycle. What you need to do is you will go into the configuration. You will click on the last item, the, the report which you have created. You will click on the exchange and 
sorry, you have to choose the completed one and click on exchange and then export it as XML. And you have to do the same thing for fixed asset model, the one which you have created. Then system will uh, basically create a XML file for you and you just need to import it in your production environment. And it will be just up and running. So you do not have to wait for next build or ask, ask the developer to check in the code and you know it should be available in, in your uh, production environment. So it's quite independent. Uh, you can be able to uh, you know import it by yourself. Uh, other information I would like to highlight here is uh, I have seen uh, recently that um, whenever we are refreshing our environment from production to uh, UAT environments, uh, this particular attachments uh, are are not the part of uh, it's not uh, taking it up from from the from the production. So unfortunately, it seems like uh, it is not storing these files and the formats which we have just updated it. These files are storing in the blob storage, so it's not part of your Dynamics database. So you have to re-import it again if you would like to test uh, any sort of reports or EFT files uh, in UAT environment. Yep, that's pretty much for today's session. Uh, let's open up with the questions. Thank you, Zishan. Yes, if anyone has any question, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask the question. We have last five minutes more. And if you want to, if you want to have more questions on to the part one of this session, uh, please feel free to watch on our YouTube channel. You can search for ANZ D365 FinOps Team YouTube channel and it will pop up and you can watch all the sessions from there. Um, hi, Zishan, this is Rachit. Yep. Yeah, so first of all, great presentation. Thanks a lot for that. I just have one question. So when you save a version of the file, after doing changes, is there an option you can specify some comments like what have you changed just as a uh, change tracking purpose? Yep, yep. Uh, system allows you whenever you make any changes, it basically uh, asks you uh, what's the description for that. So oh. for first one, I have defined this initial version. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, OK, I can see that now. Yeah, no, that's good so that we can do multiple changes and with every draft we can uh, keep a note of what we are changing. So that's good. Yep. Perfect. Thanks. All right. Yep. So one more question, Zishan. Uh, so how do you, like what do you, what is your recommendation? How do you guys store these custom ER configurations? Do you store in LCS or somewhere in uh, like locally? Well, uh, I have. Uh, well, if you ask my own personal recommendation, I would suggest that uh, companies should uh, put it in the LCS. Uh, to their own uh, repository, so whenever if anyone would like to have any any file or report or any modified version, they shouldn't ask the developer to to deploy that or load that in LCS and then we import it. Uh, it should be available for all the uh, consultants. So if it is applicable for them, they can just import it from there. So uh, it should be available in LCS and whatsoever uh, customer you are working with, uh, consultant can just choose the res uh, respective uh, file from there. OK, thank you. Thanks, Zishan. Uh, quick question, Zishan. So you talked about a couple of uh, relationships like one to many and tables and models. So how much experience a person or, or an end user should have 
from technical background to understand the electronic reporting? Well, uh, uh, I would say that uh, we should be aware of the tables. Uh, whatsoever form we are gonna gonna make any modification. Let's say uh, last time when I covered purchase order. So you do know that uh, on the purchase order, if I would like to have the delivery date, then it should be the part of either deliver uh, purchase table and uh, it's part of it. If you don't have the knowledge on having the relationship, then you have to go into the front end, check the forms and validate the fields. If it has a different field, uh, different tables uh, allocated on that form, then uh, that person should be uh, making a note and you know draw the diagram with that. OK, uh, this has a indirect relationship with the main table. Then we may have to go into the uh, one to many relationship and we uh, I might be able to find that particular field. So we have to uh, go through the front end and see what are the relationship uh, between those tables or fields which we actually would like to make any modification in the existing report. OK, all good, thank you. So last one minute, guys, if you have any question, please raise. OK, all good. So thank you so much, Dishan, again, another time uh, for giving us your family time, your busy time to the community. So we would really like to thank you for your time. And it's a great session, very insightful. And if people are more interested, we can definitely schedule more sessions on electronic reporting. Till then, uh, good five from us and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Zijan.